I'm Lens McCracken, ace photo sleuth. I photograph crime scenes. A message to the punks out there. My pictures will nail ya, then the coppers will jail ya. Have a seat, Muggsy. I need your help in figuring out my latest batch of photos. Then, after we have all the clues, sit back in wonder as I bewilder you with my powers of deductive crime-solving reasoning. It was a cold day. I was wearing a sweater. I guess that's why they call it sweater weather. The teapot was cracked and leaking. And that's why I call this case the case of the cracked teapot case. Check out these photo clues and see what you get. Whoops, sorry kid, but I guess I zoomed in way too close here. Hmm, this clue sure gives me something to chew on. Can you help me figure out what it is? Rats, another close-up. I guess I'll just have to sit back and try to absorb it. How about you? Did you soak up all the information? Hmm, I'm all out of ideas. Wanna take a whack at it? Come on, baby, serve me one of your ideas across the table. Now, let's look at them all carefully. Well, I don't know how you're doing, but this looks like a job for my dogmatic darkroom computer, the Solutionator. So here's the first tasty close-up. Did you figure it out? It's red licorice. Good work, sugar. What's the next photo? If we get this one, we're well on our way to mopping up the case. A sponge. Okay. This last picture isn't even giving me a sporting chance of getting it. It's a ping pong paddle. Now it's time to really score and wrap up the case. The famous circus tumbling act, the great spazoids, were working their day job as house cleaners. They were scrubbing the kitchen of Old Lady Hill's mansion when they spied some red licorice hidden on the top shelf of the pantry. They climbed up on top of each other's shoulders, but still couldn't reach it. Then one of the spazoids grabbed a ping pong paddle to swat it down with. That's when it got ugly. The spazoids took a fall and landed on the Old Lady's china cabinet, thus breaking the said teapot. What's that sound, baby? It's the sound of the fat lady singing because the case is closed. Am I good or what? When it comes to solving crime, I don't have time for petty details and facts. That's why I'm Lens McCracken, Photo Snoop. Person, Dora Smarmy. Good evening. I'm Dora Smarmy, and welcome to Distraction News, where we give you the news, and at the end of our newscast, I will ask you five questions about what I've reported. So make sure you're not distracted. And now, our top story today, <laughs> earthquakes. The Earth's crust is made up of pieces called plates. The pressure from the built-up heat and gases under the Earth causes the plates to rub against each other, causing the Earth to shake. This is called an earthquake. The cracks between the plates are called faults. Faults at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean cause earthquakes at sea, producing huge waves that are called tsunamis, which is Japanese for tidal wave. When they hit land, the waves can be as high as 150 feet. Wow! And finally, to measure earthquake activity, scientists use an instrument called a seismograph. Well, that was pleasant, wasn't it? Let's see how well you were able to remember the facts. And be sure to count how many you get right. Otherwise, no ice cream. What is the Earth's crust made up of? Cups, saucers, or plates? The answer is plates. What causes the plates to rub against one another? Love and marriage, heat and gases, or franks and beans? The answer is heat and gases. A crack between plates is called a fault, a splinter, or a clunky. The answer is a fault. What is the Japanese word for tidal wave? 
Jumanji, Swami Bami, or Tsunami? The correct answer is Tsunami. And finally, what is the name of the instrument that measures earthquake activity? Phonograph, Steffigraph, or Seismograph? The answer is Seismograph. So, how did you do? If you got any wrong, was it A, my fault, B, your fault, or C, the gremlin's fault? Well, that's all the time we have for today, but remember, don't ever let anything distract you from watching Distraction News. So long. This has been Distraction News with your favorite cardboard cutout anchor person, Dora Smarmy. It's your friend Sketch here to lay something heavy on you. Just cause you got eyes doesn't mean you always see. You got to get the whole picture before you really know what's going down. Don't believe me? Well, I'm gonna show you some pages from my sketch pad. But not every page. See if you can tell what's happening before I show you the missing pages. You dig? Picture this, a groovy young couple have a baby in Boston, Massachusetts. He's a cute little dude and everything seems fine. Both the mommy and the daddy-o were born in Boston, Massachusetts. The grandparents too. But the little dude can't be an American citizen. Born in Boston, his whole family too. But he's not an American. Crazy. Can you figure out what really went down before I lay the missing pages of my sketch pad on? Cause it all will make sense. You might think we're talking about a different Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> but that's not it. Oh, you might think that the family just happens to be on vacation in the United States when the baby is born. But that's not it. So you gotta ask yourself, when can you be born in Boston, Massachusetts and not be an American when your parents were also born there? How about in 1720, when Massachusetts was still a British colony? There was no such thing as the United States back then. So you couldn't be an American citizen. You did? So like I've been telling you, when you really use your eyes, you're gonna draw the right conclusions. Oh. <laughs> 